my name is Sasha. Um, on, on the event, I was uh, coordinating the search and rescue teams. So it's the so-called head of mission. Yeah. My name is Darius, and I was always part of the bridge team, um, mainly as a captain. Not mainly, but sometimes. Okay. So um, tell me about the Juventa history. When was it born and uh, why? Yeah, in, in the beginning, it was, um, as Darius said, it was a, more a campaign than a proper search and rescue um, effort. Because these, uh, these young people from Berlin, they, they were involved in these welcoming um, moments in 2015 in, in Germany. The, the goal of the campaign was to be recognized and uh, to force the state to take over again and launch another Mare Nostrum uh, kind of uh, mission. And it's, it was not happening. So in the end, uh, they had the ship and then um, they asked around for, for people joining the crew. That's why um, the both of us, but also others uh, joined. In the very first uh, mission, we managed to, to rescue I don't know, more than 1,000 people. Yeah, and from that on, there follows 15 other missions. So it was in total 16 missions um, in one year. And in August 2017, the Uganda was seized. So it was only in operations for one year. But the different crews managed to save over 14,000 lives in that one year. That's amazing, of course, because... Uh, every person who doesn't die, it's a reason to go out and do this work. Uh, in your experience, in the Juventa experience, how the rescue operation at sea have evolved, have changed uh, during times? Uh... Personally, I would say the rescue missions itself, it doesn't didn't change. You are a small crew on a ship and at the end, technique-wise, everything is the same. The only thing what changed is from year to year and it changed often is the behavior of Europe and it's mainly the Italian state and how they repress against us, how they stopped the ships and they every year yeah, they developed a new tool to stop the civil sea rescue. It's it's always horrible, of course, when people die out there, but it's even more horrible when you are sitting the whole day in a trial in a courtroom because you have this stupid trial. Yep, um I think there are two major changes. Uh, in, on the one hand, it's the um, the Libyan, the so-called Libyan Coast Guard, the presence and the uh, the equus, so that, that they are in um, intervening in rescues and um, not only intervening in rescues, but also um, had managed to um, yeah to kidnap um, people from the boats and uh, forcibly brought them back to Libya and in, in super high numbers. So this is a, a quite a major change, uh, but also these uh, administrative, um, you know, all the laws who prevented uh, chips from, from going out. And it's, it started with Salvini, who doesn't allow chips to enter the port. Uh, then the next phase was, okay, the ships can go in the port, but they are not allowed to leave again. And then they were stuck for months uh, inside the port, uh, mainly because of uh, yeah technical uh, administrative reasons, um, and now on top uh, this after the Kutro um, disaster, the Piante Dosi decree, who who made it even uh, harder to to operate. On the one hand, it's uh, this policy of um, the the ports. So that uh, after rescue, the rescue ships are assigned a port of safety, but it's not Lampedusa, it's not Sicily, it's way more far north. So the ships uh, need a long time to transfer to these places, and that's uh, sometimes one week or two weeks just to transfer people, plus these uh, detentions. So that uh, in the Piante Dose degree, there, there are some uh, rules, and if you not apply to these rules, yeah, put a detention of a uh, minimum 20 days. Uh, is it true that you were ordered to abort a rescue mission in order to get back to the port? Uh, and when your ship was at the port, uh, at the harbor, 
the authorities place some microphones, some hidden microphones on your ship? Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. Uh, it was in May 2017 when we were engaged in, in a rescue operation with uh, several other uh, NGO ships on scene. And um, after one day of full rescue, um, we were asking to transfer our people to a port of safety. And the authorities denied this. Uh, after hours of negotiations um, and pressure also from the other SAR NGOs uh, on scene, uh, to, we were allowed to transfer just a part of the people. And we ended up with five miners. Um, and uh, the MSCC Rome ordered us to uh, transfer these people to Lampedusa. Despite the fact that the NGOs present at scene were like calling for our help and calling also the MSCC saying, um, we are, until, until now we see 10 boats on the horizon and it's not the end. So it's the people are still coming and we are overwhelmed and we are at our limits of capacity and just said, no, it, it's okay. We, we, we will send help uh, anyway. Once we arrived in Lampedusa, it was quite fast. Uh, but later we learned that in these few hours, uh, uh, the ship was bugged. Yeah, in total there were 21 boats in distress in the three days. And five of them disappeared. So five of them, three rubber boats and two wooden boats disappeared. So it could be that it's up to 1,000 people which drowned on this weekend. I don't know if you can imagine it, how it was like, because you hear the VHF radio of the other ships, you hear it for hours. For hours, there was a hell down there. That They were totally overhand. We all the time thought, why? Why did they took us out of this rescue? And why are we not allowed to stay there and help those people? I wanted to ask you the role of the National Anti-Mafia Directorate in the management of the southern maritime border of Europe. Uh, I really recommend to... To everyone uh, reading the article um, from Lorenzo D'Agostino in The Intercept. So in the end you could say that uh, the anti-mafia um, prosecution in Italy had the role to uh, crack down on smuggling networks uh, and they identified the Libyan um, smuggling networks as a new target and as a new kind of mafia. And they they used the technique what they um, from their fight against the mafia, and that was mainly uh, going for the small fishes and then going up the, the ladder and finding the, the bigger fishes. So they uh, used the Mare Nostrum um, ships, the Mare Nostrum operation, to place uh, police officers uh, on the rescue ships and doing interviews straight away after the rescue. So their plan was to use the most vulnerable moment uh, when people just got out of the, the life-threatening situation to ask them questions about who was the driver of the boat. And so they managed for a long time to get a lot of arrests, to, to find, to identify people who steered the boat, who were holding the compass, and they identified them as part of the smuggling network, although they they were absolutely aware that these people are people on the move themselves, uh, so not part of the of the smuggling network. But they needed these moments of uh, victory. And then, uh, when the civil fleet uh, engaged and uh, yeah laid out their their own rescue missions, we kind of disturbed this this way of of uh, police actions and that's one reason why they target uh, us as a as an as an enemy they had two ideas the one was to place um, police officers also on our ships that was one part of the so-called code of conduct uh, issued by miniti um, that was one request so that they could go on with these uh, interviews and arrests uh, and if that's not possible then uh, blaming us for uh, colluding with smugglers and uh, try to use legal means to um, stop our missions and had again a clear uh, field of operations for their own purposes. 
tell me about the, the the case against you. At what stage uh, uh, is uh, the process? Uh... Good for the statistics against smugglers, but they are no smugglers themselves. They are just as I'm searching for freedom, for life, for whatever. They have the right to come to Europe and apply for asylum. That's sure. And everybody should be able to make this right, to use this right, and not to put his life in danger to use this right. Aiding, we are we are charged because of aiding and abetting illegal immigration. In total, we are 21 persons who are charged in this trial. It's a really, really big trial because we are charged because of helping people to immigrate illegal to Italy. And it is not illegal to come to Europe and ask for asylum.